Good morrow, people of the internet, and welcome to Phoenix Ray Ace Attorney. Last time we did some court, this time I guess we're doing some more court. Let's go. The court will now reconvene for the trial of Miss Lana Sky. Emma didn't come back. Allow me to call the next witness to the stand. The officer in charge of guarding the evidence room on the day of the crime. Witness, please state your name and occupation. Me, partner? Oh, I'm just a man, the same as you, wandering the trails of civilization. Occasionally helping the elderly cross intersections when needed. Oh, I know, you're a patrolman. If I'm a name, if you listen hard enough, you'll hear the howling wind coming out. To be exact, it's Jake Marshall, your honor. Howling wind? Never heard Edward described that way before. Now, Mr. Marshall, let me ask you something. You're in charge of guarding the evidence room on the day of the crime. The day the crime took place. Is this correct? According to the papers, partner. What do you mean? A desperado soul is as boundless as the desert sands. No paper can sum it up. Maybe it's best we get on with this quickly. Please share with us your testimony the day of the crime. In English. Day of the crime. My job was to keep a wary eye on the bone organ. They said I was supposed to make rounds three times a day, but that ain't my style. Besides, the room's protected by two security systems anyway. If I remember right, I was at the street side saloon at the time it went down. I'm just an innocent traveling man, so if you're out of ammo, it's time I hit the trail. I can't say I particularly care for your attitude. I can't say I care for your beard, but you don't see me complaining. Wait a minute. What do you mean by two security systems? I mean the security cameras and the ID card reader. I reckon even a cowpoke like you knows about those. Yeah, so what about the fingerprint activated locks inside the evidence room? Fingerprint activated locks? What kind of new fang do are those? He's not being very helpful. He's not that good with machines, or f with following orders. Everyone got their weaknesses now, don't they, Mr. Prosecutor? This one seems like trouble. Okay, Mr. Wright, he's all yours. Well, let's consult the walkthrough! Okay, got it. Got it, got it, got it. Press. Hold it. How exactly do you keep an eye on the evidence room? I just made no shut. I just made sure nothing moved with the security camera monitor. That room's so still. Every time, every even time dies in there. I was just caretaker who entered the recordings. You entered them? Videos of nothing aren't that useful. When the time would come, I'd erase the tape. If nothing unusual is recorded, the tapes are to be erased every six hours. Each time I'd erase the tape, it felt like I was erasing a part of my life. This guy has a flair for the dramatic, but it isn't going to do him any good. So in actuality, you don't physically- you don't- You don't physically enter the evidence room. Said I was supposed to make the rant, okay. <laughs> what, what, what? Okay, it's finally time to use the trial card. Present Marshall's prints on his fourth and or fifth statements. So this is his second. Two, three, four. Present. OBJECTION! Officer Marshall, doesn't it strike you as odd that it is you being called in to testify like this? After all, you weren't in the security room at the time of the crime, and yet you dragged me down here. Explain yourself, partner. It's quite simple. You left a very large trail behind at the scene. Or to be exact, a handprint. <laughs> this is a real good partner. Like I said, I'm the caretaker of the crypt. I pay my respects, that is make it my rounds, about once a dip month. It's only natural my fingerprints would be in there. OBJECTION! I only wish it were, officer. But you see, your fingerprints were covered in blood! Witness, what's the meaning of this? 
Your bloodstained fingerprints were at the crime scene? The blood was wiped away. However, a luminal test clearly revealed this. Well, Officer Marshall? Seems to me there ain't a person in this room with a head on his shoulders. I take it you have an explanation then, Officer Marshall. About the bloodstained fingerprints? Very well, you may begin your testimony about your fingerprints, found at the scene of the crime. Well, same fingerprints. Like I said, it's only natural for my fingerprints to be in that evidence room. One of them just happens to be at the same place as the bloodstained handprints. The murderer touched the locker where my fingerprint was by chance. The bloodstain and the fingerprint are completely unrelated. Oh, did you know the murderer was wearing gloves? See? I have nothing to do with it. How do you know the murderer was wearing gloves? Hmm. The witness explanation appears valid. Although there's room for doubt. Life wouldn't be fun without any doubt, partner. The defense may now cross-examine the witness. This guy's holding some- This guy's hiding something. I can feel it. That's my chance to prove it. Plus stained fingerprints. Like I said, I'm just press him. That's because you, how did you put it, pay your respects once a month? Yeah, that's right. That and one more thing. That locker happens to be mine. What? What do you mean? I mean what I said. That locker, I, that's the locker I used when I was a detective. The locker I still use. All that's in there now, though? Broken dreams. I see. I'm wrong, but it'd be strange if my prints weren't all over that locker. Apparently, his fingerprint data was never changed. He's been using the fingerprint lock without even knowing. Marshall's prints of Dave Hood. Okay. Okay. Fifth. Two. Three. Four, five. Hold it. How do you know? How do you know that? I may be alone, but I still do my job. I keep on. What? There was a blood stain at the scene, though, that might be left thought to be left by the murderer. That's right. I found a detective gumshoe's locker. However, no fingerprints were detected on that handprint. Oh yeah, I think we tried that too. Hmm. So that would mean the murderer wearing gloves happened to place his hand on top of, of Officer Marshall's fingerprint. That's the only logical conclusion. Aren't you starting to get the picture, partner? The picture? The seal of blood. In the desert, it's just food for the buzzards. There's only one re reality, and that's this. This curdy tape. So long as my trail isn't in there, you can't say otherwise. This isn't getting us anywhere, Mr. Wright. Please consider carefully when you're going with this cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Now then, continue your testimony, Officer Marshall. Too bad it wasn't me in that video, right, partner? Well, let's see what the walkthrough has to say about that. Press on that statement. What do you mean by that? Write a diamond to the scribe. Isn't that right, partner? If so, that video is the only direct evidence you had. OBJECTION! Your video is next to useless. It's full of blind spots. Blind spots? Places you can't see. The camera's panning back and forth. The floor isn't shown. If someone familiar with the camera's, camera's position, he could leave the room without being caught on tape. OBJECTION! We don't have the time for speculations, Mr. Wright. Well, Mr. Wright, if you can show us evidence in this video that indicates Officer Marshall was present, please do so now. Are you sure you have a dance? Okay. Because then the piece sticking out, uh, you see... Allow me to point out your off mistake, Officer Marshall. Tread carefully, Mr. Wright, or you might wind up being the one making the mistakes.
Now let's look at uh, Show us this incriminating evidence. The witness. Officer Jake Marshall. Hmm. What's the incriminating evidence? Let's look at the walkthrough. He's on the piece of cloth sticking sticking out of his locker. Left you four. Okay. Two. Three. Four. This is the left, correct? Uh, Joker Jake's locker, there was a piece of cloth sticking out. If you wind it, you'll see it wasn't there before. Ah, there it is, there it is. Take that! Bringing our attention back to security camera is a mistake I'm afraid you'll soon not forget, Officer Marshall. The days are short in Texas, and so are our tempers. Could you sum up what you have to say in eight words or less? Very well. You can clearly be seen in that in this video. Exactly eight words. Not bad, though. The key lies in a certain locker shown in the video. See this locker that has white cloth sticking out? This is the witness's locker. Now then, let's rewind the video a bit. Oh, the white cloth, it's gone. What's the meaning of this, Officer Marshall? When the crime took place, the witness cloth wasn't there. Then it suddenly appeared. There's only one explanation. Officer Marshall, you were in the evidence room at the time of the crime. What's more, you opened your locker the camera was when the camera was turned away. Order, order! You see, that's only. Hold your horses! Sorry, partner, but you got the wrong man. So, what if my locker was opened? That doesn't mean I'm the one who opened it. The murderer needs to hide something to open the locker and stuck it in. It's not my fault what happened. To you have to choose mine. Why is everyone staring at me like I'm a wanted man? Because you're a fucking idiot. This guy isn't just playing dumb, he really doesn't know. Uh, I hate to rain on your parade, but you're the you're the only person who can open that locker. Particular locker. Oh yeah, I will call you bluff. You say I open it. Now prove it. Take that. Uh, fingerprint sensor. We talked about this earlier today. The lockers can only be opened by the detectives they belong to. What kind of crazy talk is this? Detective Gumshoe did mention something about this. In any case, the locks aren't that obvious. There's even some people in the force that don't know about the fingerprint locks. So, Sheriff, what do you have to say, in eight words or less? I only got one word for you, partner. No! Order, order, order! Witness, explain yourself! If, th if this is a joke, it's the worst I've ever heard. Are you sure? This is no joke, Officer Marshall. Melvin, please tell us what you were doing in the evidence room at the time of the crime. Ol- Olay? Olay, I guess. Please answer the question. What is he now? A bullfighter? Hey, is Olay. That's right, Officer Marshall. I believe we can figure the rest out from here. We can? We have a look at the floor plans. There's no place for someone to hide in the evidence room. Yeah, Officer Meekins didn't see Officer Marshall. That's so, then. Where was the witness? Seems Mr. Wright has an answer. That's right. The only possible conclusion. Well then, let's hear it. Where was Officer Marshall at the time of the crime? Uh, 
Just as much as we must do. Just as show where Marshall was, you examine the evidence report. Present the victim's V spot. Ah! <laughs> Take that! Officer Marshall was standing right here. Where? But that's that's where the victim, Detective Goodman, was. Correct. Unless the man wasn't Detective Goodman. I believe this victim in the video is Officer Marshall. It was huge, dressed up like Detective Goodman. Objection! But that's preposterous. Officer Meekins witnessed the detective at the crime scene. Once he saw the man's face, he knew for sure. Objection! May I point, may I point out, though, that Officer Meekins did not know Detective Goodman. He also testified about the man's reaction when confronted. What oh, no, are the end of this room? I was in show with ID contact! Yes, and how did Detective Goodman respond? He's only my life on me! Something about the officer's story puzzled me. If the man had his ID card, why didn't he just show it? Yes, he would have needed it to enter the evidence room, so he must have been carrying it. That answer is simple. He couldn't show it. As you can see, Detective Goodman's picture is on this ID card. Oh, I get it. If he showed that, his cover would have been blown. Officer Meekins would have realized the man wasn't Detective Goodman. Do you have anything to say to this Officer Marshall? You are quite an imagination, partner. We got a term for that. It's called circumstantial evidence. Circumstantial evidence? Still denying it. You're gonna have to do better than that to break a detective. Unless you have hard evidence proving I dressed up as the victim. Hmm. I can't say I particularly care for your uncooperative disposition. I can't say I care for your beard, but you don't see me. Well, Mr. Wright, do you have any evidence? Any evidence proving beyond a shadow of a doubt that Officer Marshall dressed up as the victim? Well, who am I kidding? I don't have anything like that. I can see the fear in your eyes, partner. Seems like you're the one who couldn't take the desert heat. Desert heat. Yeah, this can't be happening. So obvious he's the one. What can I do? <laughs> it looks like your lack of experience has finally been exposed. I'll pass on to you what someone told me when I was just starting out. When you run into a wall with no places to go, return to the basics. The basics? For me, that would be what me used to tell me. Nick, try thinking outside the box. I shouldn't look for a proof that Officer Marshall was in disguise. But rather, I should look for evidence that came about because he was in disguise. Why do you think this locker was opened in the first place? What do you mean? There's no reason for Officer Marshall to open his locker at the time of the crime. Yet he did, despite the chance it might be discovered later as it has been. Which means he didn't originally plan to open his locker, according to the defense's argument. Officer Jake Marshall dressed up as Detective Goodman at the time of the crime. Then, after the crime was committed, he opened his locker for some unknown reason. The fact that a white cloth is sticking out of the locker seems to indicate that. He opened it in order to put the cloth inside. So, just what exactly is this piece of cloth? Perhaps? Perhaps the video is the key to all our unanswered questions. I don't have any evidence, so the video is my only shot. Very well. Let's take yet another look at the security tape. Let me check the walkthrough. Uh, you. Right view three, pause, pause just as Goodman, if he is Goodman, lunges at Meekins. There's blood on his shoulder, lots of it. Sent this to the court, there was lots of blood, so it would be too obvious he thought Meekins here. Hide it. Okay. Okay. Please show us why the witness had opened his locker. Blood! Take that! For some reason, you disguised yourself as Detective Goodman and entered the evidence room. I don't know what the reason was. Yet. Yet. However, something unexpected happened. Officer Meekins barged in on you. When asked to show your ID card, you pulled a knife on him. However, Officer Meekins panicked. 
and the witness, the witness's white coat you were wearing was soiled with blood. A bloody white coat. You couldn't just walk out like that. So you hid the coat in your locker. Not bad, huh, partner? Now then, Officer Marshall, are you ready to tell us the truth? Looks like I nursed him, man. I hope you're happy now, Mr. Edgeworth. Two years ago, if you're only half as persistent then as you are today, we all wouldn't have to be here now, would we? Officer Marshall, tell us the court what you did. All of it. Alright. It was the... It seems the time has come. Marshall's confession. I had to do it. I had to do it that day. I couldn't just stand by and let it die. I stole the detective's ID and dressed like it. I planned to take out the evidence. I wasn't expecting that. Officer Meekins, I knocked him out. And managed to escape. I knew which areas couldn't be caught on the camera. There wasn't any murder in the evidence room. At 5.15. So the susp supposed victim was really you. But there's one thing I still don't understand. Large quantities of blood traces were found on the floor of the evidence room. If no one was murdered, then how could that be? Well, Sir Meekins managed to cut his own hand. My guess is he's the donor. It looked like too much blood for that. Marshall's confession, cross-examination. Okay, first statement. Okay, press all of Marshall's statements. When you say it, you mean... Do you ever... Do you even have to ask, partner? The SL9 incident. Two years have passed since that case was closed. It was going to be complete, completely end with the transfer of that day. Not if I have anything to do with it. That answer is not over. What did you hope to accomplish by sneaking into the evidence room? When the case is closed, only a detective who is in charge of it can look through. The evidence? The evidence. I wanted to have a look at it myself one more time. No matter what the cost. I don't care what anyone says, partner. That case is mine. But Officer Marshall wasn't in charge of that investigation. Why does he care so much about it? The day was my last chance. That's why I... Okay. Why did you disguise yourself as Detective Goodman? If I didn't make it look like Goodman was carrying out the evidence transfer, I'd be arrested for stealing evidence, which wouldn't get me anywhere. So you did it to fool the security camera? And the detective's ID card? I stole that in the morning of the incident. So that really was why Goodman started filling out that lost item report. I returned his ID card. I left it on the floor in the prosecutor's parking lot. The ID card I found was left there by Officer Marshall. So essentially, you managed to succeed despite your lack of foresight. What do you mean, partner? I mean, the fingerprint activated lock, of course. No matter how well you disguise yourself, you couldn't change your fingerprints. Normally that locker shouldn't have opened. So open because a rubber glove was stuck in the door by charge. Then, Detective Goodman must have opened the locker before Officer Marshall. You pull a knife and Officer Meekins tried to drive him off? Let's just say I was a little surprised. Only plan on being in the evidence room for no more than five minutes. I didn't think anyone would actually come in during that short time. Officer Meekins simply is a one in a million type of person. Is taking a detective for an intruder and demanding to be shown his ID. I'll have to think a little more about his race this year. When did Edward get so much influence? Anyway, he threw himself at me, and I ended up cutting. I ended up cutting him slightly, so I had to turn out that way, with me knocking him out and everything. By the way, what happened to your knife? Oh, you mean this one? I don't know what to say. Hmm. So what happened next? Let's see you caught on camera. So you did so you did your research beforehand. 
though, till we got into the desert unprepared, don't live long, partner. I didn't think it would make a difference, though. Security tape is erased every six hours. If all I had got, if all I had gone as planned, no footage would have been left. However, you bloodied your coat in your struggle with Officer Meekins. If someone was in the security room when I came out, the jig would have been up. I put my locker and stash it in there. What, what was Officer Meekins doing during that time? What else? He was sleeping like a baby. So, what you're saying is, on that day, But the blood found at the scene and certainly indicates a crime took place. What are you, blind? The victim sh shown it on that tape is me, and I'm not dead yet, partner. But you stole the evidence from the locker. Actually, no, I didn't. Why not? When I opened the locker, the evidence was already gone. What? Mr. Edgeworth, where is that evidence? It's still missing, Your Honor. Uh, I have it. Detective Gibbons' locker was already empty. Someone else stole the evidence. Officer Marshall, may I ask you one thing? Far away, partner. It's a free country. Just remember, I'm also free to decide whether or not to answer. Why did you do this? Stealing the detective's ID, injuring a police officer? This is no small offense. Moreover, you're an officer yourself. This will have serious consequences. It can't just be forgiven with a simple cut in salary. Not that salary cuts are ever a valid solution. Like I said, this isn't your case. This one is mine. And I'll do anything it takes to get an answer I'm satisfied with. Hmm. The witness has an unusual amount of zeal. Let's hear more. You can't just forget the LCL9 incident. You know why? If you press on that statement, you'll find out that the serial killers do. Uh, Russia still feels no any means to agree with the case. And that case was solved two years ago, wasn't it? That's the, re that's the reason the evidence was stored in the evidence room. Joe Dark was convicted for those crimes. One thing I can say for sure is he deserved his sentence. I remember the Joe Dark case. It involved serial murders, didn't it? about how it turned out, but there's something that still bothers me. Something went down at that trial. Something no one will talk about. What happened? I don't know. That's what I'm trying to find out. Why is he so concerned with that incident? Maybe I should present him with that, with what I think is the reason is. If I had a feeling, we'd wind up here sooner or later. Everyone involved here is related in some way to that case. Better take another look at the at the files. God, the SL9 incident. Hmm. Parts of the dark killings involved two years ago. Touch check one for details. Criminal Joe Jock. Crime zero murder sentence. Death. Ooh, I I don't agree. The death sentence. Uh, victims, Edward Jones, Edith Kirby, Jeb Bates, Jason Knight, Rachel Moss, Neil Marshall. I think that's why he's so caught up with that case. Head Prosecutor Miles Edgeworth, Witness Lana Sky, Emma Sky. <sighs> Investigating Task Force, Executive Investigators Damon Gant, Lana Sky, Head Investigator Bruce Goodman. Investigation Jake Marshall, Angel Star. Objection! Officer Marshall, I think I understand. I think I know why you care so much about the SL9 incident. Sounds like you've been sipping too much cactus juice, partner. I have the SL9 incident file here. The name Marshall is mentioned in here. A list of murder victims. Neil Ma Neil Marshall, are you related to this man? Neil Marshall? Yeah, I'm sure you've heard the name. Two years ago. He received the same lousy prosecutor award you got. What? A prosecutor? We must be talking about the King of Prosecutors Award. Now I, rem now I remember. Prosecutor Neil Marshall. He handled the SL9 case before I did. 
That's right. He was killed. And the case fell into your hands. But what's his relation to you? He was my brother. He was investigating the murders with Damon Gant, chief detective at the time. The group of detectives I was part of worked under them. We were desperate to prosecute the killer. Joe Dark. My brother fought Dark and was killed. That was the first time Dark left behind any evidence. Now it's all we needed. He was arraigned, arraigned and incarcerated. That was that case was fi the case was finally closed. At least according to the public records. What do you mean? My brother couldn't have been killed by Joe Dark. I knew my brother better than anyone. No one could have beaten him in a fight. And that's it? That's your reason for your insane actions? There's more to my brother's death than what the records say. No matter how much you try to hide, you can't fool me. Well, at least one thing's for certain. Now we know what happened at the police department the day of the crime. What was the last day if the SL9 incident could be reopened? Not satisfied with its resolution, Officer Marshall planned to steal the evidence. Disguising himself as Detective Goodman, he entered the evidence room. Officer Meekins confronted him, so he rendered him unconscious and fled. Yes, this mystery has finally been cleared up. No murders took place at the police department that day. <laughs> the things that happened by chance never cease to amaze. At exactly the same time as the murder at the prosecutor's office, this fake murder was going on at the police department. Chance? It's got to be more than just that. So if no one was murdered at the police department the day of the crime, that means the murder in the prosecutor's parking lot was the real one. Which in turn means only one person could have committed the crime. Chief Prosecutor Lana Sky. Objection! But, but, but wait! The verdict hasn't been reaching yes wasn't reaching yesterday, show sure. objection. Which is why we examined the incident in the police department today. But there's only one reason the defendant was not convicted yesterday. There yet remains the mystery of the simultaneous murder of the police department. It seems to me, this boy's got to draw on you got to draw on you, partner. All the mysteries at the police department have been uncovered, no contradictions. Remain. The murderer took place at the prosecutor's office. The only suspect is Lana Skye. There was no errors in the testimony of the witness, Angel Star. If you have a response, make it in one word or less. Gah! I rest my case. Seems the trial has reached its conclusion. There's no room for doubt. Well done, Mr. Wright. Thanks to you, I didn't need to waste my time disproving the alleged murder at the police department. No doubt what I proved today is true. The plant murder on the security camera's tape really was fake, but I didn't realize that would end up proving Lana guilty. Now then, time the time for verdict is right. This court finds the defendant. Hold it! Oh, oh, it's Emma! Y Your Honor, wait! Emma! The defense is an objection! A scientific objection! Right? What do you mean, right? Mr. Wright. Are you this girl's guardian? Your Honor, oh, uh, in a sense. Please, Your Honor. Only I'm asking for is for a minute of your time. Please, hear me out. Mr. Etrith, please. I don't want to leave any loose ends. You want a minute? I'll give you three. I... I was kind of in shock. I mean, finding out the SL9 incident referred to the Joe Dark killings. Yeah, but she mentions it. The names of both Sky Sisters were in that file. But that's when I figured it out. I mean, what Officer Marshall was trying to do that day. So I knew his fingerprints had nothing to do with the crime. That left only one thing. The other handprint. I mean the traces of blood found in Detective Gumshoe locker. But no fingerprints were found on it, right? No, but I figured if I examined it scientifically, it, I'd bound to find a clue. So, I ran over there and looked at it again. 
So, did you find something? Um, no. Huh? Sorry, I guess I'm not much of a scientific investigator after all. Um, is that all? Please don't be mad, I'm just a high school student. And I'm just an attorney. But Mr. Wright, those traces of blood are the only clue we have. If we can, if we can't fi find something wrong with them. Please, Mr. Wright, you're a professional. If anyone can save Lana, it's you. Me? Oh boy. Time's up. Now then, Mr. Wright, we've got to the incident of the police department. Does any reasonable doubt remain? Um... It appears that offense is troubled by the other blood mark. Looking at the floor plans, a handprint was discovered around her. Is there a problem with this? Mr. Wright, I'm sorry I can't be of more use. But still, if you can't find anything wrong with that blood mark, Lana will be... Please answer my question, Mr. Wright. We don't have all day. Y yes, Your Honor. All I've ever needed to concentrate is now. What would be wrong with the handprint in the Gumshoe's locker? Could there be something I'm uh, missing? I object! I object! Objection! Objection! Bit late. This handprint left of the crime scene clearly shows a contradiction. The only thing that seems clear is your grasping, Mr. Wright. Staring pretty intently at those floor plans. Tell me, is there a problem with them? Yes, this is strange. Take a good look at these floor plans. Something is missing. Missing? You mean something hasn't been drawn on there? Yes, something that, when drawn, will completely change the meaning of this blood mark. Let us pray that the fence isn't simply trying to buy time. Very well, Mr. Wright. With all this evidence here, it's got to be something I can use. The question is, which item can prove something is a misstep missing the floor plans? Also could have been present the blue badger panel. Take that! What about the piece of plywood? The blue badger! Must go the police force. Defender of truth, guardian of proof. Explain yourself, Mr. Wright. Please look at the floor plans of the crime scene. The blue badger is not here. So? So watch what happens when we put him in. This is where he was dancing at the time of the crime. Well? Well, what? That's right. So long as the blue badger is dancing here, it would be impossible to place a handprint on this spot on the locker. What? That means... Uh... Just exactly what does that mean? It mean... It means it can't be done. What are you saying? Blood traces were undoubtedly found on that locker. Don't look at me. I didn't put it there. Mr. Wright, think it through scientifically. Emma. Well, that afternoon. Elsa Meekins was the one who brought the blue badger to the evidence room, right? After he put it down, it would be impossible to leave a handprint on that locker. So that must mean this blood mark was left there before the blue badger was brought in. Just one moment. I will not allow such far-fetched bal balder dash in my room. It may sound far-fetched, Your Honor. That's the only possible explanation. From February 21st, in the police department evidence room. Blood was spilled not once, but twice! But how? One time was captured on this tape, taken by the security camera. Arthur Meekins cut his hand from which, from a trial amount of from which, from which a trivial amount of blood fell. The problem is the other time. Something by prior to the struggles shown in this tape. It had to have been Detective Goodman when he was really murdered. Objection! That's ridiculous! I refute you! Objection! The murder portrayed in the security tape has been proven to be a fake. However, that does not explain the blood mark found in the locker. Objection! So then, assuming this murder you pu 
purport really happened? When did it take place? I demand you show evidence that it proves it occurred. When did the first incident occur? To summarize the defense's claims that prior to Officer Miki being cut by Jake Marshall, who was disguised as Detective Goodman, another incident took place in the evidence room. The blood mark on the lock proves this. Very well, then tell us. When did this first incident occur? Proof must be presented. Proof that shows when the murder took place? Some one piece of evidence that can show that. Now then, will the offense please present its evidence? What shows the first crime took place? Uh, uh, which ID card? Goodman's ID card, I think. It's in the ID card record. ID card record. ID card record. If a crime took place inside the evidence room, then the perpetrator would have had to have been entered the room in order to do so. An ID card is required. An ID card? Oh, the ID card record. Also, Meekins brought the blue badge of panel into the evidence room at, let's see here, 4... 4.50. If the crime took place before that time, then it would be 4.40 p.m. Ah! Ah! Miles Edgeworth! Just what have you done? I never think you would know, boy. What of the act, witness? It doesn't take a lot of thought to figure out it couldn't have been me. Nope, I'm getting it. Windows 10? Hmm, I'm afraid I don't understand either. It's clear from the luminal test that blood was there. However, when the second crime took place, both Officer Meekins and Officer Marshall failed to notice the blood. That means... But from the first crime was wiped away by the real murderer. It would have just been ten minutes to murder the victim, carry his blood away, and clean up the blood. Unfortunately, that's physically impossible. That would mean the crime must have taken place before Miles Edward entered the evidence room. No, oh, Mr. Ed. Let's take a look at the chart again. There's only one other card number remaining. Seven, 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 seven. I think I read that right. Talk about a lucky number. But wait, that doesn't make sense. How could Officer Goodman have entered the evidence room? Since there's no since there's no record of his card being used beforehand, he must have entered along with the real murderer. That's the only plausible explanation. He went in with seven 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 seven. Mr. Edgeworth, please look into this as soon as possible. Find out whose ID number is seven. <laughs> Seven 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 seven. That's one seven too many, Your Honor. Unfortunately, I'm unable to look up the owner of that ID card. At least at present. What? Explain yourself, son. The ID number seven 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 belongs to someone with a rank of captain or higher. Someone who is so-called executive officer. We don't have the authority to inquire into such a person's identity. OBJECTION! But that's ridiculous! Just how- I'm not finished talking, Mr. Wright. There's one situation in which we can be granted such authority. If an official charge filled against an ex executive is accepted. An official charge? You're all lack, aren't you? With your cover-ups and your forgeries. That's how the prosecutor's office operates. Objection! I take pride in my work, Officer Marshall. I would appreciate it if you would keep your slander to yourself. Slander, is it? Okay. Let me ask a question. Yes? No, not to you. To her. The defendant's sitting over there. No little executive. Lana? Objection! Don't be stupid. She's been charged with murder. Of course we've looked up her ID number. And it's not seven 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 seven. Don't play me for a fool, partner. That's not what I meant to ask. I don't want to know something about that incident. The SL9 incident. Answer me this, Chief Prosecutor. In that trial two years ago, did you really only use legitimate evidence? Do you need the witness? Do you need the witness to repeat the question, Chief Prosecutor? I heard him fine, Mr. Edgeworth. Two years ago, I was in charge of the prosecution for this trial. At the time we... 
Occasionally, we felt the powerlessness of the law. At least, I did. L Lana! I became a prosecutor in order to suppress crime with the law. But before I realized it, we were the ones being suppressed by the law. Defend it, just what are you saying? I'll ask you again, Chief Prosecutor. During that trial two years ago, did you really present all the evidence in court? Can you look me, an investigator in the, in the crime, in the eye and say you did? Chief Prosecutor, you didn't! I don't have to... I don't have to, Officer Marshall. <laughs> Why don't you answer him? Drastic crimes require drastic measures. And that's just the way it is. We did what we had to. In order to... In order for him to get the verdict he deserved. But Lana! Even if it involved forging evidence. See? That's what I'm talking about. No. No! Order! 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 On his remarks caused such a stir, the chaos in the courtroom could not be called. The conclusion of the trial. We would have to wait until the following day. To be continued. Oh, what a plot twist! What a twist! Yes! And next time! That's enthusiastic. That's a bit too enthusiastic for this channel. We're the depressing channel of suicide. Next time on Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney... I don't know, what is next? Uh, I'm guessing more investigation, but it might be more caught. I hope it's more caught. I really like the court more than the investigating. Well, yeah, let's just say quickly. I've just done my outro, but, you know, we're still going for a bit. You know, we just gotta wait. There we go, now we can go. Wait, 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 wait. We gotta wait for the text to crawl. And... See ya!